welcome to the Black History Now Live series. My name is Jade Magnus Oganaki, and I'm Vice President of Campaigns at Color of Change. Each week, we will deliver to you an episode on the fight for Black history, leading up to our second annual Black History Now Award show. Today, we have two amazing guests, which we're super excited to share with you. First, we have Steve Bumbaugh, Senior Vice President of College Career and Digital Access for College Board. And Steve leads College Board's partnerships and outreach to underrepresented communities. Through the development of digital access tools, as well as intensive listening and engagement with stakeholders at all levels. Steve helps shape College Board programs to ensure they propel students from all backgrounds into opportunity. Steve also serves as co-chair of the College Board Foundation, working with policymakers and building partnerships to measurably advance educational access and opportunity for all students. He earned his undergraduate degree from Yale University and his MBA from Stanford University. We also have Dr. Brandy Waters here, who's the Senior Director, Program Manager of AP African American Studies. At College Board, she leads the development, launch, and outreach of the new course and works closely with high school and college faculty and external partners. Brandy holds a PhD in African American Studies and Latin American History from Yale University and master's degrees from Harvard University and Johns Hopkins University. As we all know, curricula and lesson plans have been the battleground in the fight for equitable education. Steve. What's at stake for parents, students, and educators in this fight for Black history? I think what's at stake fundamentally is just the opportunity to learn. We have barnstormed this country talking to a variety of audiences, often Black audiences, but often much broader than that. And one of the consistent themes we hear is just how little people in this country know about the black experience, about the black narrative. And we're a relatively large group of people who's been in this hemisphere for 500 years. And this course, particularly given the broad reach of the College Board, has a real opportunity to fill in a knowledge gap. Also, what's at stake is we try very hard to deliver engaging courses for students and teachers and the community at large. The sort of excitement we're hearing about this course, what we're seeing in this first year pilot, what we're hearing both from teachers and from students is a level of excitement that I've not heard for any course in the time that I've been at the College Board. So also what is at stake is one of these really rare opportunities in education to really hook students and teachers and when we hook students in this particular course, we have this notion that it will be a launching pad for additional advanced coursework for all students. But for black students in particular, we receive these sort of persistent skills gaps. We receive this persistent achievement gap. This is a tactic we can use to start closing these gaps and start pulling black students into the sorts of education and academic resources they want and deserve. So Steve, from your perspective at College Board, what is really behind sort of the skills and achievement gap that we're seeing? Is the hope that the AP African American Studies course will be of such interest to black students that we'll be able to help close that? I think we should be realistic. The, the, the roots of what we've come to call the achievement gap are deep and long standing. And I don't think many of us believe that one course is going to close that. But primarily, it's a, it's a, uh, when you look at the schools that black students attend, they tend to be uh, segregated. They tend to have less experienced teachers. They tend to have fewer resources. This course can't change all of that. But because it is an AP course, it is going to have the same resources at a school in Scarsdale or a school in the South Bronx. Teachers in those schools will have access to the same resources that all AP teachers have access to. So we're very excited that we're able to deliver a course that is framed around the black experience, but frankly is available to everyone 
uh, that can be delivered equitably. Absolutely. And that's totally filling in that knowledge gap you were talking about earlier. Um, the fact that there's such a dearth of Black history information available is is you know a crime. I know I would have loved a course like this when I was in high school. Steve, you mentioned that um, the AP African American Studies teachers will have access to the same resources that other AP uh, uh, course teachers have. What are some of the resources that College Board offers to for these AP courses? Brandy will be able to answer that question better, so I'm going to turn that one to her. There are so many exciting resources that we've developed just for the first year of the pilot. So of course, like any other AP class, AP African American Studies teachers also have the opportunity to attend our AP Summer Institute, which is a week long summer institute that really immerses them in the content, the skills, the assessments for this course, and also introduces them to all the resources that we offer in the pilot program. So some of those resources include the lectures that we'll be providing through our partnership with the Gilder Lerman Institute. These are self-paced courses in African-American history led by some of the leading scholars in the field so that teachers have the opportunity to asynchronously catch up in some of the areas that they might need more support in. We also offer monthly office hours, which are some of my favorite times, so we can check in on how their classrooms are going, what questions they have for the upcoming units. It's also a chance for the teachers to brainstorm with each other and share best practices. And then the AP program has also developed unit specific videos that are tailored to this particular course framework. So the faculty that we work with closely, in addition to those videos offered by the Gilder Lerman Institute, have put together curated videos for each unit that offer some sample teaching practices and tools and discussion ideas for each of the units in this course. So we try to make sure that there are a number of resources available in terms of asynchronous presentation preparation and also working with their fellow cohort of pilot teachers and having access to the AP team as well. That's incredible. Um, Brandy, what inspired you to work with College Board to create this AP African American Studies course? When I heard about this course, I was thrilled for any opportunity to be a part of it. I mean, this was a chance to bring the field that I stumbled upon in college to students who were much younger than I am. This is the kind of course that I would have wanted to have in high school, even without knowing all that it entailed. By the time I got to college and graduate school, I saw that African American studies was such a rich and dynamic and interesting field. There was so much for me to explore, so many resources that are actually available. So the opportunity to create this kind of college level course for high school students that are really interested in it was something that felt like the right thing to do after finishing graduate school. So I think this is the kind of opportunity that comes around once in a lifetime to have this broad of an impact. And I'm thrilled that I got to be a part of the research and development process and now bringing it to high school students across the country. Yeah, we know that including education related to students' backgrounds can have the potential to increase material retention, improve attendance, and overall classroom performance. Are you guys seeing this so far with the launch of the AP African American Studies course this fall? At the time I grew up, uh, the sort of representations of Black people in the popular narrative were really unidimensional, almost minstrelly. So I grew up watching, you know, rerun and JJ on TV. I grew up at the time when uh, hip hop was just beginning. And I grew up when, you know, Dr. J and Magic Johnson, you know, were the popular sports stars. I didn't see myself in any of the popular narratives I saw uh, black people uh, depicted as. It wasn't until I started taking courses with Glor Professor Gloria's bell hooks, real name, that I saw I was a nerd. I saw, oh, wow, there were actually these groups of writers in the Harlem Renaissance who got together and they discussed ideas. And so I will say very personally, what was really important to me about having access to those sorts of academic resources, it was the first time I saw myself deeply embedded in an African-American narrative. And as a boy, who was pushed constantly to be something that I wasn't, it was really critically important to me. And I, I desperately hope uh, this course is able to start that sort of productive journey for, for other students. 
That is so exciting. Again, I have a three-year-old, so I pray that she can take AP African American Studies when she is in high school. It's super vital that we approach corporations and key decision makers that hold the information that's disseminated so widely. So for example, Color of Change has been running campaigns demanding publishers like McGraw-Hill implement editorial standards um, in textbooks and classroom materials around Black history. We know that with this fight against what some are calling critical race theory, which is just another term for really black history or queer history. Um, there are there are corporations who are actively seeking um, to remove black history from schools and there are elected officials who are actively seeking to remove black history from schools. What are the active steps that College Board is taking to include equitable education and really maintain community outreach for this, of course, AP African American Studies, but others as well? What's really special about this course is the ways that we've engaged the community from the beginning. So that included having different kinds of community focus groups, sending some of our staff out in their local communities and just asking folks, what do you think about a course like this? What kinds of things do you hope your students encounter? What do you hope they walk away from? And I think those are the pieces that really helped us to start to envision the broader structure of this course. So we've been engaged with different community organizations and groups of students and parents throughout the research process. And then as we designed the course, we had multiple iterations and reviews with different faculty committees to make sure that the course was not only aligning with their expectations in higher ed, but also the work that they hope this field does in the world. So I think what's really unique about this course is that it's had so much community input, not only in the beginning of the process, but throughout the process. I would say the final piece of community engagement and feedback that's really been useful to this course is with the pilot teachers themselves. The first year of the pilot uh, includes teachers across the country in a variety of different schools with many different settings and different kinds of students. So when we ask them about how certain resources landed or how students are experiencing particular topics, we're getting a lot of diverse feedback. So that enables us to think about different kinds of learners even before we concretize what this course will look like moving forward. Can you both share a little bit more about your classroom experiences with African-American history? Good, bad, inspiring, frustrating. What do you know now that you wish you'd been taught in high school? I'm much older than, than Brandy. So I was in high school before either of you uh, was born. And we just, we just didn't learn anything in my public high school that was 50% black about black people. We just didn't learn anything. My first encounter with what one might call African-American history or, or studies was when I arrived in college and I was really fortunate to be able to take five courses with uh, the scholar known as Bell Hooks. And it just changed. I, I didn't know that there was this canon of literature written by Black people in this country. And it just excited an appetite for learning. And I've been on this journey since I was 18 years old and, and, and stepped into my first, uh, I think it was called uh, Black Women in Their Fictions literature course. Uh, I found it really delicious and it whetted my appetite and that hasn't abated in all those years. How lucky you are to have been taught by Bell Hooks. Oh my goodness. Tell, tell me about it. She was incredible. She really was. Wow, that's incredible that you had the opportunity to work with Bell Hooks. I think for me, I just remember being a high school student that always wanted to know more and to know more deeply than I had an opportunity to know. I felt like the little bit of access to black history that I learned in high school was always the same thing and very piecemeal. What was really great about my education in college and graduate school was that I got to understand Black life from the perspective of an entire discipline of Black studies, which is a little bit different than just the sprinkling of Black people that you often get in American history. So African American studies brings this interdisciplinary approach that really makes learning about Black life in different places and different time periods much more interesting and engaging. It asks really deep questions and synthesizes across time and space. So one of the things that would have been really great for me to know in high school that I didn't know until I got to college, I guess I didn't really understand that Black people truly are everywhere and that there is something to be said about the ways that our experiences are often connected and impact each other. 
So for me, going to college and learning about the concept of diaspora and having diaspora as a foundational lens, that really helped me to ask different questions about slavery and its undoing, about the contemporary moment, about how Black people live out their lives as citizens in countries where they are often marginalized, um, countries with legacies of colonialism and slavery, or countries where that hasn't been the case. So I would say it wasn't fantastic that in high school we had such a limited opportunity to learn about Black people, but the bigger win was to learn about African American studies as a field and to get these different frameworks to see the connections that Black people make between their own societies and the larger world. We talked a lot about the educators in high school and sort of like the huge group of people that came together to make this course happen, the professors, academics, high school teachers. Who are the people who are really going to be teaching this class? What is the kind of training and pe preparation that they are getting for handling this material? So the teachers are really wide ranging, which is what's so interesting about an African-American studies course more than a history course. There are, of course, history and social studies teachers, but there are also literature teachers, English teachers, art teachers, teachers from the sciences that are interested. And I think they all bring their own lens of expertise that really highlights certain areas of this course, in addition to its broader foundations and framework. So for this first pilot, the teachers come from all across the country, and we really took the time to focus on teachers that had a strong background in this field whether through their own study or because they had created a similar course in their own local communities. So we mo mostly wanted to learn from their expertise and their experience while also incorporating pilot teachers who were brand new to the field and just kind of stepped up and said, this is an interesting course. This is something I wanna bring to my school. I think by doing that, we've been able to learn about what kinds of training is most beneficial for teachers, what helps to fill in the gap versus what might be overkill and not super supportive. Um, we will always offer, as I mentioned, the Summer Institute and these other mechanisms that teachers have for training and also providing some of the resources for this course as well. I think Steve, you mentioned a little bit about this earlier, but what are you all hearing so far from students and teachers and maybe even parents about the course? Wow, this is my favorite question because I think that I am in such a blessed position, not only to contribute to the course development, but because I am able to hear from all of the pilot teachers and students. They're so excited. They're thrilled by what they're learning and they're thrilled by the opportunity to use this course as a platform to discuss some of the topics that were already on their minds. So we're hearing that students are surprised by what they're learning, filling in some of the gaps that they had, exploring some complex topics very, very deeply, but they're also making connections between the past and the present. So if there was a question they had about something that's currently going on in society, they use that as an opening point to dig more into this framework and into, more into this course. We've also heard that students are sharing what they're learning with their communities, with their siblings, with their parents. One student said that because her mom never got the opportunity to take a similar course, her mom is actually reading all of the materials with her and she's having these conversations with her mom and sharing what's going on in the classroom. We've also seen from the pilot teachers who honestly really requested this course before, long before we considered building it, that this gives them the opportunity to introduce a lot of projects that they've always wanted to do with their students. Whether it's a project about African diaspora food around the world, or it's a project that really walks students through the seven principles of Kwanzaa, they're so creative in the ways that they are thinking through this course and the materials and making the content really come alive in a relevant way for students. So they've been excited to be a part of the pilot, to share what they've learned, and also to give us feedback about what's working well and what they'd like to see adjusted for students in the future. I just also wanted to say, uh, I was a fly on the wall at the Summer Institute where teachers were trained, and I thought it was a lot of it was gonna be about content and instruction, and it was. But really what I left feeling was that it was a spiritual experience. At some point, a bunch of black male teachers pulled me aside and they wanted a picture of all of us. They said they'd never been in a room with this many black men who had been teachers. My understanding is that uh, the groups of teachers in this pilot have formed essentially a support group. So I've really been struck by the, by the spiritual element to this course, and I'm not sure that's uh, typical of, of our courses, but I think it's important. Well, thank you so much, Steve and Brandy. Thank you for this incredible work to bring this 
AP African American Studies course to reality, to bring it to schools, to bring it to teachers, to bring it to students. Um, your work is making all of us so very proud and we're so, so happy to be able to talk to you all and partner with you all on sharing the good news about this AP African American Studies course. I also wanna thank our Color of Change audience for staying and listening to, the, to today's conversation. Um, we have several petitions going on around critical race theory right now in the fight for black history. Um, please sign them and thank you everybody so much. Have a fantastic day.